everyone. In this video, we're talking about, as far as I know, the first documented Future Shock Delete. Now, what's a Future Shock Delete, you might ask? It's a simple yet fully engineered rigid cartridge that replaces the complex and heavy proprietary suspension cartridge found on many specialized bikes. Let's go check it out. Now I've actually done a whole bunch of videos on the Specialized Future Shock, which is their proprietary suspension system found on many of their road and gravel bikes, including the Diverge, the Roubaix, the Cirrus, and some of the Turbo Creo models. It's a great system and it definitely helps to smooth out the ride, but many complain that it's perhaps too proprietary and it can get expensive to replace, especially since the company claims you're supposed to replace it after every 500 hours of use, which is like once per year or even more depending on how much you ride. Now at the moment there's no way to completely do away with the Future Shock since the fork and the headset design are completely different from a standard fork and headset. So unfortunately owners of Future Shock equipped bikes are basically stuck with the technology as long as they own the bike. But that all kind of changes today because over the past few months some of my students and I have been working on a rigid replacement for the Future Shock that's cheaper and way lighter. Oh, and by the way, the Alloy Future Shock headset spacers are back in stock in the online shop. These are for any bike equipped with any version of the Future Shock, and they allow you to raise or lower your handlebars up to 15 millimeters in five millimeter increments to dial in your bike's fit. And we do ship worldwide, and the link to more information and the online shop is in the description. And that is the end of the shameless plug. <laughs> Now the Future Shock comes in two flavors, the basic 1.5 model and the more premium adjustable damping 2.0 model. And both versions help to take the edge off of rough roads and chunky trails and increase overall comfort on the bike. Now in my experience, I do enjoy the plushness that the Future Shock offers, especially on gravel roads. But at the same time, I've always been a little bit bothered by this is the exclusive nature of the system. Now the Future Shock cartridges aren't even serviceable according to the owner's manual, and you are in fact expected to replace them every 500 hours or so. Furthermore, there aren't any aftermarket options for consumers, yet. Now this seemingly simple cylindrical piece of metal is a replacement for the Future Shock cartridge, and we're calling it the Future Shock Delete. But don't be fooled, it's been properly engineered. Now what that means is we've gone through several iterations, and we've settled on a design that's easily manufacturable, lightweight, and extremely strong. Now we've done the finite element analysis, or FEA, on this part, which takes the CAD model and simulates the stresses in a loaded state. Now our simulation parameters were something like 400 pounds vertical force applied at the end of a 120 millimeter horizontal stem, which is a pretty extreme scenario that puts more stress on the delete than is realistic. And we still had a nice factor of safety before we observed any yielding. Now we also considered material properties of several metals and opted for 7075 T6 aluminum for its low weight, relatively low cost, and its superior strength. We even measured actual stresses using a strain gauge and did some fatigue analysis to ensure that this thing has an essentially infinite fatigue life. So what does that mean for a potential consumer? Well, it means that there's now potentially an option for owners of Future Shock equipped bikes to have a rigid delete that they can swap out at any time and not feel quite as stuck having to repeatedly buy Future Shock cartridges. Right, so of course the question is, is it actually a viable option as far as ride feel? Well, to be honest, that's kind of what I'm testing out today. Now, we're confident that the delete is strong and it won't break, but the question is, was the rest of the frame and fork designed so stiff that without the Future Shock, would it feel too harsh? All right, let's see. So right now I'm on a pretty decent road. It's not perfectly smooth, but it's not rough or chunky by any means. And let's see how it goes. Yeah, interesting. There's like, obviously there's no motion in the handlebars. It kind of feels like when the Future Shock 2.0 is fully locked out. Now, of course, there's no actual lockout on the 2.0 but you can bump up the damping so it feels pretty stiff. And that's basically what this feels like right now. Stiff, but I can definitely feel a little bit of give. Part of that's probably from the tires, but also probably a little bit due to the frame and fork as well. It's interesting, it does feel pretty sharp. 
I mean, not like a true road bike. Interesting. Yeah, honestly, it actually feels pretty sharp. I mean, I guess that's what I would expect since there's no movement at all in the handlebars, but it does feel pretty quick and responsive. Kind of like a true road bike, but without the twitchy geometry. So far, not bad. Now, the Delete is lighter than either of the Future Shock units, but I kind of doubt that I'm feeling the effects of the weight reduction. Let's see, so to give you the numbers, the Future Shock 1.5 is 305.6 grams, and the Premium 2.0 is 348.8 grams. While the Future Shock Delete weighs in at 163.6 grams, with a little rough draft version of the top cap and some extra wire still attached to the strain gauges. So in its current prototype state, that's a weight savings of 142 grams over the Future Shock 1.5, and a savings of 185.2 grams over the 2.0, which is actually nearly half a pound. Now, of course, the true test will be how it feels on rougher gravel roads, which is why if I timed this right, we should be coming up to a nice little test track, which is called Arroyo San Miguel Trail. Now it's pretty short, but it's got some ups and downs. It's got some rutted stuff and some loose stuff. And depending on the time of year, some pretty chunky stuff as well. Let's see how it goes. Not as chunky as I was expecting, but we got some stuff. I thought I was going to be rattling all over the place. Not the case at all. I mean, I really didn't miss the Future Shock. I mean, obviously that wasn't too chunky, but it's not as big a difference as I would have imagined. Um, obviously, higher volume tires, proper pressure is going to help a lot. And maybe you don't actually need the Future Shock. Huh. Here's some bumpy stuff. Yeah, no problem. I suppose the only real way to get any quantitative data is to get like a data logger, some accelerometers, uh, high sample rate, data acquisition, and just really look at the numbers with the future shock and without. But my guess is we're not actually gonna see a huge difference huh, in the RMS values, which is basically just kind of how much energy is in a given signal but that is for another video anyways i don't know i could definitely tell that the future shock wasn't there but it's definitely not as harsh as i imagined i wish i wouldn't have weighed all the units first because it did kind of feel a little bit poppier in the front end but then again i'm not sure if i believe that i was feeling the 185 gram weight reduction or if it was mostly just in my head probably the latter now, there's obviously definitely a trade-off when you lose that 20 millimeters of suspension, but really, it wasn't that bad. I'm actually pretty excited about this thing. Now, obviously, for this kind of trail, probably you'd be fine without the Future Shock. Maybe if you're doing a lot more technical, ruddy, chunky stuff, you'd probably appreciate that. And of course, this was a really short section of trail, so obviously one of the big benefits of Future Shock is that it's supposed to alleviate fatigue over long miles and just that sort of low rumble so i don't have any data on that yet but we'll get there now for now i think i'm actually going to leave the delete on and see how it goes over the next couple hundred miles now, i'll definitely report back if i find that i'm really missing the suspension but my guess honestly is that i may not miss the future shock as much as i think but then again who knows we'll just have to see well, I'd say this is more of an exploratory type of video, a smattering of loosely related thoughts, if you will. Mostly, I think I just wanted to share this project that we've been working on for the past several months and just kind of gauge your reaction. So definitely let us know down in the comments what you think of the first ever Future Shock Delete. And, um, you know, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.